Good afternoon, everybody. Hope you're keeping well on this um, Maker Saturday, let's say. For first up, apologies. For some reason, my thumbnail didn't come up properly. Um, but the whole day is supported by Yorkshire Grit. Yorkshire Grit. Oh, wrong shoulder. Yorkshire Grit. So everything today is supported by Yorkshire Grit. Um, there is a hat giveaway going on. So at the end, um, this will be after two hours, not just after one hour. I'm not doing two hats. Uh, at the end, I'll be asking a question. And the first person to answer it correctly will be winning a hat. And then all you've got to do is contact me with your name and address and everything. And we'll see about getting that sorted. Right. So who have I got for earworms today? You notice I'm taking my time. I'm taking my time today because I'm on for two hours. <laughs> so, my earworms for this evening. Steve from SK Crafts. We have got Hello. the lovely Joe Senior. Um, the, the other half of the Yorkshire Grit team. And we've got Mark the Gentleman Woodturner. So Hi, that's who's going to be uh, keeping me up to date with uh, what's going on in the chat and everything. Um, I best explain what I'm going to be doing, haven't I? Right. What we've got on the lathe at the moment is a piece of ash. It's um, just under 16 inches diameter by about an inch and a half uh, thick. Um, I'm going to be making a wall hanging or wall plaque out of this. So it'll be painted. I'll be using uh, chestnut products, ebonizing that. Uh, this is going to be the, the bottom of it, so that will be getting grit on there. I'll be using chestnut products, ebonizing lacquer, and Joe Sonia iridescent paints using a string pull technique, uh, but two different string pull techniques I'll be using on the top. So um, I'll leave you in the good hands of the earworms, and I'll get started turning. Right, shall I read the names out? Go Please. on. Right. From the participants list, so subject to change as we go along. In alphabetical order, Andy H is for turning Barry's Wood Creations, Brian at Hardwood Turning, Brickhouse Craftworks, Chris Cox, Circular Wood by Keith, Clive Rogerson, Colin Izzard, Cornish Maid 1982, hi Katie, Dave B, David Eichenhauer, Dennis Beamish, Doug Miller at Wood Spun Round. Uh, Country Foot Girl, Funk and the Demon Barber, Walking Owls, Gerard the French Turner, Hodgepodge Woodworks, John S, John Scalfo, John N, Huey Lionsheart, Lawrence Bugaja, Lionel Pucos, Martin Douglas, Michael McEwen, Mike Doyle, Mike Hugh Hollywood Turner, Mike Walt, Neil Gold, Paul Smith, it keeps going on and on. <laughs> Pete from Twisted Trees. Barry from Real Simple Things. Richard Phelan. Richard K. Archibald Spinningwood. Robert Nye. Robin Thurigal. Bonnie Lutfo. Uh, Robert Dunwood. Sidley 61. Steve Ellis. Stuart Ingrill. Glenn, the Yorkshire Kit. Terry TJ Turnin. Wayne Bigfoot Woodcraft and his gorgeous wife Valerie. William Rose creates Wivy Woodshed and Stuart Ingrill, Stephen Gordon, Steve Ellis. Keeps changing. Uh, I think that's pretty much everyone else. I'll go back to the normal chat. Gary Letizia. Paul. Space Games. DJ's Hobbies. Tornado Wood Turning, Kimmy Morgan, and anybody I've missed, I do apologise. Hello and welcome to Wayne's channel. Well done, Mark. Mike, Mike the Midnight Joker. <sighs> Carl Jacobson. Uh, Hi, Carl. Hello, hello, Carl. Hi, Carl. Country Girl, Country Wood Girl's in as well. Loads of them coming in. Loads of them. Thanks, everybody, for coming along. It's much appreciated. You have 114. What I'm going to be doing. You have 114 watching, Wayne. Excellent. Cheers, guys. Bye, Proud Sim. 
Karakulin tin. As usual, everybody, if you've got a question for Wayne, if you could start your question with a couple of question marks or a couple of capital Qs, just so we can spot it in the chat. And as usual, YouTube chat is playing up. So if we do miss it, please repeat it and we accept our apologies. It's not our fault, it's YouTube's. JP's giving you a super chat. He says, two pound, his music is better. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's going to trouble. Yep. Robert Dolman's in. Yorkshire Gates in. Hey, Glenn. Did you mention Rickhouse Craftworks earlier on, Mark, in that list of people? Seth? Who's, who's sorry? Brickhouse, Brick yes. Brickhouse, Yeah, yeah I said Brickhouse. Right, so, who is put, put a comment in there, Wayne, for you? Just a record from the Scottish Forestry Commission. They are currently struggling to keep up with the demand of supplying <laughs> enough wood for you for two hours. It's got a question. He says, given the size of that blank, Wayne, what are you going to do for the other hour and 45 minutes? <laughs> I tell you, mo most of this session is going to be taken up with the painting. There's not a hell of a lot of turning in this. I'm basically flattening this off and putting, putting a bit of a curve on. And on the top side of it, I'm just going to be doing it flat uh, because it is going to be a wall hanging. But the other piece, um, there's a bit more turning yeah. involved in the other piece. Yeah. I've seen yeah, we've well, we've seen the other piece. We've repeat. Sydney sixty one, is it? Hi Sydney. Jennifer, the real Jennifer. Afternoon Jennifer. Idea Wood turns in. <laughs> it was fine. Right. People, every now and then I have to cough because of my throat problem. And when I cough, I move my mic. That they thought that was your zip. So dodgy. They, that's, I thought it was your zip being undone, Mark. That's what they thought. That's it's my it microphone. I move it so I don't cough down the mic. Microphone. Oh, knock, knock a guy when he's down. <laughs> <laughs> Pick on the cripple. Oh, I know. You can't say that. I can. Yes, you can. <laughs> I can. Nobody else can. <laughs> Steve Gould wants to know will the VB36 be showing its face? Uh, not today. No, not today. Um. I could have done the other piece on the VB, but no, I'll stick to... I'm just using the Axminster to the day. Pete I, Pete, I could hit mute, but if I hit mute, I lose the YouTube chat. Then I have to go through all the tabs to try and find it again. Now, the thing with this, I don't want to make this mortar very deep uh, because obviously it's not a very thick piece of wood and I've already got a mortar in the top anyway. And the last thing you want on a wall hanging is a funnel. Mike Walt says... Oh, do I have different lathes to choose from? Wink, wink, wink. <laughs> yes, Mike. I was lucky enough um, to get my VB a few years ago.
Right, so the mortars I've put in there is around about three mil. It should be all you need. As long as it's the right size, the jaws will grip fine. Um, for those of you who are new to the channel, hold your ears because Drilly's coming out. Hey, Drilly. Good uh, turn daily players in by player. Good afternoon, Blair. Well, it'll be morning for them, won't it? Good morning, Blair. 144 watching, Wayne. Nice. That was 80 grit. This is 120. Pete says he'll have a VB36 when he grows up. <laughs> and finish off with 240. Nick Castle and Ian Chapel have both joined. Oh, you're on fire tonight, Mark. Yes. He's just woke up now, isn't he? My, my chat's actually working for a change. <laughs> right, I'm just going to use some acrylic sand and sealer on this. Uh, uh -oh. James Pritchard's just joined. Benjamin, just did the online Sainsbury shop while listening to Wayne. Reviewing kitchen roll. Get triple ply, Ben. <laughs> it's better for the colours. <laughs> Don't break up so quick when you put the colour on. That was the acrylic sand and sealer. I'll just wipe off any excess on there. And again, usually when people use uh, sand and sealer and things like this uh, if they're not going to use Yorkshire grit you do need to knock this back but seeing as how I'm using Yorkshire grit I don't need to knock this back because Yorkshire grit is an abrasive so it does the job for you so there we go Yorkshire grit James Crawford Henry. is in he says it's the first time on the chat and it's from Fife Hello, James. Good Welcome, James. Close neighbours. Well, Fenrika Woodstuff's in as well. Close neighbours. We've also got CDA Wood turning. Hi, Dan. Um, oh, do I have to sing this now? <laughs> the Yorkshire, Yorkshire kid says, puts P45s away. <laughs> Yeah, I'll not be using Yorkshire grit on the top, Glenn, but even the next piece is a burr that I'm doing. I will still be using the Yorkshire grit on that. Dara says she can't figure out how to go full screen on her laptop and see the chat at the same time. You can't. If you go full There's screen, you lose the chat. There's an easy answer for that one. Right, so I'm turning the speed down to around about 250. Just to and work the, the grit in, I'm using the same piece of paper that I applied the grit with. And you just work it in. And as you do that, the abrasive within the paste breaks down and becomes finer and fine. Cam Porter says, oh, my God, tell me more about Yorkshire grit. I think that's Cammy's garage, isn't it? Yeah, I think so. It's finer and finer. So I sanded up to 240. Using the Yorkshire grit, once the Yorkshire grit has done its job, this will have an equivalent grit of around about a thousand. And the good thing is, is that you don't need your dust extractor on because what you're doing is wet sanding. It's not producing any dust. And anything that it is producing is getting caught on the paper. So Steve Gordon's asked a question, Wayne. Yeah. 
Does the grit get stuck in the grain of the timber with open grain or timbers with no. open grain? No. What happens is is that the grit breaks down. It breaks down and becomes finer and finer and finer. So it doesn't get stuck in the grain. <coughs> it's held, it's suspended in a mixture of different oils, mineral oil, lemon oil, and also beeswax. So the beeswax will actually stay on the piece and it will produce a nice shine, although it's not a finishing product. The finish goes over the top. And what you do is you keep on working it, putting the speed up a bit, getting a clean piece of paper. And what you want to do is work it in until the paper comes away clean. Once the paper has come away clean, that actually shows that the grit has done its work and it's finished. The clean piece of paper. And it is the most awesome stuff. So Gerard the French Turner has asked, I am wondering what is the black piece in Wayne's Yorkshire grit tub? I don't have it in mind. Is it especially for Sir Wayne? Right. Okay. No. Um, the thing in the Yorkshire grit tub is basically a saver. So you know, um, people do have a tendency of leaving the top off. Easiest way to correct that is to put the top back on. But people do leave the top off, and if it gets knocked off the lathe or the bench or whatever and lands upside down, you've got to clear all the shavings away. With this, this actually comes out. So if it falls upside down, you can take this out, clean all the shavings off, and put it back in so you don't you lose a hell of a lot of grit. Costas is in. He says, next time I will be with Wayne turning side by side. I read this comment in my chat after I... After I close was a great idea. Yeah, speed turning with Wayne and Costas. That would be awesome. I would absolutely adore that, Costas. I'll have to come across to your workshop, though. <laughs> Costas, you did a great job in your life, mate. Beautiful yeah, piece. There we are. That's Yorkshire Grit done its job. I'm just going to finish this off now with some microcrystalline wax. Although it is something that hopefully won't be handled a hell of a lot. Microcrystalline wax is very good for products that are handled a lot. It's very hard wearing and tends not to show fingerprints. Ian Chappell's asking, have you slowed the lathe down for the wet sanding? Yeah, a bit, what I did, I uh, started off at 240 for the uh, Yorkshire grit. And then as I changed paper and got clean pieces of paper, I increased the speed and I'm up at around 600 now. Leaping Lima Craftworks is joined. Hi, Leaping. Or Lima, whichever you prefer. I haven't seen them in a while. Right. Flip this around. Cammy's Garage says he's sorry he missed the earlier streams. He's had, he's had other things on going on today. It's all right, Cammy. Don't worry, mate. Just have to go and stand in the corner. <laughs> Five minutes. Fred Oliver said he's late as well. Hello, Wayne. Late uh, and and you. Looking after. Yeah. Yeah. Take the puppy. Stand in the corner. Peter Lager said hi. Hi, Peter. I did suspend the rule earlier, but I've reinstated it. <laughs> Ten minutes or later, that's it. You've had your luck. <laughs> yeah. This is Wayne we're talking about. Well, I'll just get this top straightened off. Obviously, I'm wanting to take the mortise away, so I have got to uh, take a fair amount off this. So I will use a little bit of the diameter.
Theodore Katsimakis is in. Hi, Theodore. Wacky Workshops is in. Hi, Wacky. Wood Dude, Wood Dude's in. Hi, Steve. Leticia says, 10 minutes late with Wayne, you don't miss the start, you miss the whole demo. <laughs> <laughs> 168 in, Wayne. Excellent, cheers, guys. 20 minutes gone. Oh, okay. Le Leaping lemur has a question. What's the diameter of this piece? It's around about 15 and a half inches, which is... Enough. Around um, thirty-nine, just ju yeah, just under, just under forty centimeters. Oh, thirty-nine and a half centimeters. Michael McEwen's in from the west coast, Victoria, British Columbia. Ian Chappell's asking, is that a push cut or a bevel cut? That's a push cut that Wayne's doing at the moment. But he is riding the bevel. Yeah, he is riding the bevel. Right, I might just dish that in the centre, just where the, the drill point was. Costas has given you a, a two euro <laughs> super chat to says to sharpen the tools for the side by side live. <laughs> Cheers, Costas. That has no, that has to happen. That yeah, just has to happen now. Definitely. Nice piece of wood, that is. Very pretty. It's pretty. It's going to get painted black. Somebody did yeah. ask earlier. Is it? Is it out of balance because it's denser on one side? Yeah, it is. It is out of balance. If I put that up there and let it go, there you go. And the reason, we, I don't know if you can see the, the small markings at the bottom. You probably see it better on the other side. Uh, it's got a wee bit of burr there. Usually this happens the other way around because this dark side here is the hardwood and this light side here is the sapwood. And you usually find it's the hardwood that is um, well, a bit of tear out there. I think I'm going to have to go back the other way with the gouge before I sand. You usually find that the hardwood is denser and heavier than the sapwood. Um, uh, Mike Walters uh, exclaimed, I'll try and do this justice. Ah, black. Lol. <laughs> <laughs> Right, just see if I can get rid of some of this tear out by going the other way and going more with the grain than against the grain. Pete says, just as well as 39 centimetres across. Because the 40 and the 406 WL means 40 centimetres over the bed.
lot of vibration right at the edge there. Let's have a look see if I've got rid of it. Yeah, all that tear out is now gone. So that'll sand a hell of a lot easier now. Pat Cummins has just joined. Hi, Pat. James Crawford is asking, Wayne, you know a lot about old lays. Don't know what you're trying to say. Do you know anything about, I think he's saying, about my lathe? It's a kitty. Yeah, kitty. Um, kitty lays, I don't know if they're still being made now. Uh, they were made in the sort of 70s, 80s, and 90s kitty lays. That was 120, going to 240. Now I am going to sand this one to 400. Ray Scott's joined. Hi, everyone. First time on the chat. Welcome, Ray. Welcome along, Ray. You're still there, Joe. Oh, yeah, I'm here. Yeah. Yeah. Can you hear a snoring? Just... <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's going to get you even bigger slap than I deserve. <laughs> oh, she knows I love her, really. 165 watching, Wayne. Excellent. Cheers, guys. Right, so I'm just using some methylated spirits. Oh, oh. sorry. It's a, it, it's a, it was a kitty bandsaw. Oh, Kitty Bansaw. Yeah, uh, Kitty Bansaws, they've been around for a long time as well. I, I don't think they're that bad a Bansaw, to tell you the truth, Kitty. So I'm just using methylated spirits or denatured alcohol just to clean all the dust out of the grain as it's going to get painted. That's painted, Mike. Painted. I like More volume is in, says hello. What's the completed bow count so far? We're on our first one. <laughs> <laughs> we're slowing him down with questions. I'm yeah. taking me time. The thing is that normally on a normal live at half past, Wayne would be nearly finished. <laughs> right. Ebonizing like that. Now, what I'm going to do, hang on, I'll turn the speed down on this. Gary Tuck. Hi, everyone. Hi, right, Gary. The, low, the lowest speed I've got on uh, this belt is around about 150. Um, I'm leaving it on the lathe when I put the ebonizing lacquer on because then I'm going to turn it on the lathe to, uh, on 150 and um, to help the ebonizing lacquer dry. CTA Woodturn is asking, Wayne, have you had a rant yet? No, no. I've, well, yes, Dan. I had a huge rant earlier on because my bloody internet wasn't working properly. Back in a sec, guys. Yeah. What's his pole turned up? Yeah. 
Uh, Dennis Beamish, or oh, yeah, Beamish. Wayne, have you ever used a small chain instead of a yarn or string for the string pull? Do you have a video? Thanks, Dennis. I don't have a video of me using the chain, but yes, I have used chain before to do the the um, the the paint pull, if you like, and it works really well. Try and get some. Not too expensive um, jewellery chain for doing it with. That tends to work the best. Now, I don't know if you can see on this, but just here. Let's see if I can get it. Out the way. I've actually got two cracks. I've got one crack there, and I've got another one here. Right. I'm doing this as a demo, so I'm not overly concerned about any cracks in the piece. Good wizardry by Collins in. Evening, guys. Sorry I'm late. Good evening, Colin. Stand in the corner. <laughs> I'll move the out lining of the up. moment. Now, as I'm going to be using a heat gun, what I actually made up, if I bring my tool rest in so you can see, rather than standing with the heat gun, where's it going? Oh, it's in my hand. Stupid person. <laughs> Dear God, I'll tell you, man. You're not having a good day today, Wayne. <laughs> what I've made up is a wee jig. That's not a dance. So what I can do is just bring my heat gun around, pop it into the wee jig like that, let it sit there, now, whenever I say this to everybody, and usually forget myself, whenever you're going to use a heat gun, turn it on, pointing away from the piece first, just to make sure there's no dust. What I do, I've just got a piece of plywood like that, and I can put that back over here, pointing at the piece, turn that on, in fact, I'll move it back a bit further, Point it at the piece, turn it on, turn the air gun on on the first setting, and that will quite happily sit there so you can bugger off and make yourself a cup of tea and everything while the ebonizing lacquer or whatever paint you've got on there dries. Shouldn't take too long. The ebonizing lacquer does dry fairly quick. So, uh, Martin from Hampshire Sheen has just joined. Hi, Martin. And Good Jake Thompson. Man. And Jake, hey, Jake yeah. Thompson as well. Hi, Jake. I'm back. Hi, Jake. Hi Martin. Hi, Jake. Sorry about Jake. that. I had to go move, move my car. No, oh, it, wasn't my, it wasn't my pole turning up. <laughs> I didn't hear that. <laughs> you heard me, usually, did you? Usually when I'm, when I'm doing this, if it's not a wall hanging, if you are going to check on uh, if the ebonizing lack is dry, you're always best doing it in the centre because usually you're going to hollow the centre out. I'm still going to do this in the centre because I am going to be using a different paint to go over the centre. That's pretty much dry, that is. I'm quite happy with that. Afternoon, Rex. Rex B's joined. Hey, Rex. How are Just you? evening now, isn't it? <laughs> I, I really feel sorry for my neighbours. They're moving house today, and the oh. remove the removal lorry broke down. It's only just arrived. They wanted me to move my car. Oh, can you imagine wow. to, to having to move the whole house at night now? Gordon the Wide Wood Turner. Is there a difference between ebonizing lacquer and black spray paint? Not a hell of a lot, to tell you the truth. No, some people do use black spray paint, don't they? Yeah, oh, I have. I've used it a lot. Alejandro Velez is in. Evening. And Michael McEwen's you. here. <laughs> do I try that again? Michael McEwen's in as well. Good evening. Right, there we go. So there's the thing. So Thanks. what I'm going to do... I'm just using, uh, it's just a, a cotton type of wool that I'm using. It doesn't really matter on the colour, because it's going to get covered in paint anyway. Um, 
I'll set my paints up. What I'll do, I'll do the feather first. So I'm going to do a, a feather and a couple of flowers. So to do the feather, what I'm going to do is a series of dots. Let's bring all the paints across. It'll be easier doing it that way. Mike's got to go. See you later, Mike. What? See you, mate. It's because you've painted bye, bye, it. Mike. Yeah, you've upset it. <laughs> Doug Miller's got a question. When yeah. using paint, do you use gloss or flat? I tend to use gloss. Right. Let's, I will get myself organised here in a minute. Hi, Seth. I think he's got right. So the first one I'm going to put down is red. So just put some dots of paint on your palette. Red. Let's go for gold next. It's very difficult to tell the colours of Joe Sonia paints because they all come out creamy. I'll use the violet. There we go. And the green. And if you are using Joe Sonia's iridescent paints, you need to have a dark background to put them on because that's how they work. Back to the red. So Doug's replied to your comment of being gloss painter. I've used gloss as well. Someone said the other day I had to you had to be flat. I don't really see what the difference makes. I know gloss obviously gives you better finish, but I maybe needed a bit more floor troll in these, but it doesn't really matter. As long as we get the effect. John, they all look white because they don't really bring out the proper colours until they start to dry. No, they the bring out the proper colours once it hits a dark background. Yeah. But you can, if you hold them to light, you can just about see the colour in them, can't you? Yeah. Just about. And... That one... the violet and finish off with the green again and that should so, be up there so gerard the french turn is asking if you can use them straight out of the pot yeah you don't have to you don't have to add the flow medium to them yeah it's just that they are very thick yeah and don't actually if you if you leave them very thick on, on the piece they'll basically dry white right let's John have a look and see how long. Says as a question why do they all look white because that's the way they made it's an interference paint which is why when they do thin down when you're painting with them they do um have this shadowy effect so what i'm going to do is just put the piece of um let's get a clean stick I'm just going to place the wall into the different colored paints. Like that. Make sure they all get colored. Let's paint over all of them. Mole Valley, random. Anyone have the definition, defining answer as to the difference between lacquer and varnish? No. Not me. Right, which way am I doing this? Right, I'm going to do this. It's quite a, a short one, this, but not to worry. I'm just going to do this sort of just over like that. Make sure the paint gets onto the piece.
And then all I'm going to do is take this piece of the wool and I'm just going to pull around like this. And then place that back in the paint to get another covering. Trying to keep the wool in the same place as you started. Get the, the wool all covered with paint again. And then you basically do the same thing. Place that down like that. And then you pull it around, make sure the paint is onto the piece. And then you pull it around the other way. Like that. And then what you do is turn the wall around place it right down the center and then pull it down the other way to get the stem and there you are one feather that is clever right now what obviously yeah that's the bottom of the feather this is the top so i need to turn this piece around now and what i'm going to do now is put um a string pulled flower on either side one in probably purple the other one in green and i'm going to try and make these fairly big so i'll get a long piece of wool 178 watching wayne excellent thanks guys you're coming up terry, to three quarters of an hour sorry terry terry's um but i thought wayne was going to turn the center no terry it's a, it's a wall hanging piece or a decorative piece so it's just going to be coloured pretty. Mark Straughton. Hi, Mark. How are you doing? Hi, Mark. Right. So for this, what I'm going to do is basically soak this piece of wool in the paint. Oh, no. It's 182 watching. Sorry. Oh, it's getting close to 200, Mark. This can get messy. This can Should have used a bigger pot. JP, if you're still in the chat, mate, I just sent you a message. Once this is obviously, I'm not going to stand around and keep you waiting for the um, for the paint to dry and everything. I'll I'll show everybody the piece once the paint is on there. Um, I really must remember to wear gloves. Would do that as a question. Yeah. Sorry, Wayne. Um, have you ever done a chain pull flower with just on your paints? I haven't done a flower. Uh, one of the things I want to try, I don't know if anybody's seen any videos on them, but somebody's done a, um, a butterfly, which is really effective. Right, so that's i'm using the violet so that's the violet covered and then what we're going to do is place the string stand still just <laughs> randomly around like this and what you do is you just pull it in a straight line towards the bottom Look at that. Absolutely stunning. So there's your uh, your purple one. The next one I'm going to do is green on the other side. Wayne, I've if just you... put the put the link in the chat for the Joe Sonyas. Yeah. Uh, Could you explain the bit that we usually explain? Yeah. If you are going to be wanting to use Joe Sonyas and you are in the UK, if you wouldn't mind, get them from um, the Joe Sonya UK shop. 
Um, I know Lynn quite well, and she does support my channel um, with the provision of paints and everything. So if you do go and buy some from Jo Sonia's UK, if you wouldn't mind in the comments or in the email or the contact section, uh, uh, like I think we've got a contact section, um, just let them know that you've you've bought the paints after watching me have a play with them. It would be much appreciated. I just get that covered in paint again and then draw it out. As I'm drawing this out, the string is pulling against the side of the pot. So it's actually taking quite a lot of the excess paint off. Um, Rex B is asking, because he's obviously in America, does she have a US contact or link? The US paints, Rex. It, it's not a UK paint product. It's it's a US paint product, and I'm think I'm pretty sure they're done through um, Chroma. I'm sure that's who 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 does the Joe Sonias. I'll actually see if I can get a better base on this one, not as thick as the um, as the violet one. No, I'm still going to Not to worry. To see that emerging like that is just unbelievable. Now, obviously, this is not my idea. I watch a hell of a lot of art channels on um, on YouTube. And the way that the artists do it when it's on canvas, they actually do wet on wet. So they'll put a base coat of paint down, acrylic paint, and actually do the, the string pull while the base coat is still wet. Um, being a wood turner and wanting to get stuff finished, I thought I'd give it a go using the ebonizing lacquer. Um, so that's what I did, and it worked well. It works really, really well with the jokes on your paints. Let's see if this camera's working. So, Wayne, and if you want, sorry, Wayne, if you wanted another colour in those flowers, could you let those dry and put another colour over the top of them? Like, do yes, the same, but with a different colour? Yeah, yeah, you could. So there it is, guys. That is awesome. That's the finished that's, piece. That's so amazing. We've got a feather in the centre with four colours, and then we've got the the string pole flowers, one either side. How are we doing? Oh, that's not bad. Ten two. What I'll do, I'm I'm going to take um, a comfort break, um, for well, I don't know five ten minutes, something like that. Probably five minutes. I'll give people to go and make a cup of get a drink, use the loo, things like this. I'll put this to one side. Um, I'll probably come back. I'm, I'm going to have a fag. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to have a cigarette. Um, the guys will still be here. I'll still be here. We'll have a. Uh, we can do a, a quick Q and A before I start the other piece. In fact, I'll get the other piece mounted while we're having a chat. So that's that one, guys. That's the first one done. Nice, very nice. That's awesome. Better Loads better. of really good comments coming in, Wayne. Thank you. Beautiful, love it, nicely done, very nice, amazing, nice, awesome, looks fantastic, looks lovely. Right, I'll move. you saying, just just put the camera on, drilly, while you're gone. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll tell you what, I'll do. Um, where can I put it? <laughs> yeah, we can see that. That's fine. Can you see it? Yeah. There you go. Right. What if, you guys wanna, if you guys want to keep asking questions while Wayne goes off for a comfort break, we'll, we're still here. Well, what I'm doing now, I'm just actually mounting the second piece on the lathe. That's what I'm doing at the moment. Okay. So I am still here. So if you want to, any questions, anything like that, I mean, I am still here. The guys are still here. Um. Oh, God, that's out of balance. This should be good for a laugh. Make I'm sure the lights turn down. Yeah, make sure the lights turn down, Wayne. Don't want that walking across the floor. Because I still haven't seen it. Right, I am bringing the tail stock up on this one. This is something that I don't usually do, but I am on this one. Cammy Wayne's doing a double shift because... Unfortunately, Stuart Farini's been taken ill. 
So Wayne is staying and he's doing another hour. So you've got yet another hour of Wayne and his Daniel, amazingness. There's no need. Don't everybody start crying at once. <laughs> See, dear Nobody Wood, has to go uh, anywhere. Sorry, sorry, Joe. No, no worries. CDA Wood is asking, how long have you been turning, Wayne? Um, what are we on? 2021, 36 years. It'll be 36 years last October. Rex B's asking, how many times have you done this before till it turned out this brilliant? Uh, I do these quite a lot. The the, the flower string pull, I, I, I do them a fair bit because I do them on um, vases. I did have one here. I no, don't know where it is. I've done them on vases. I've done them on platters, uh, things like this. So the, the, the string pull, um, I've done a fair bit. Um, I think the first time I did a string pull, I think I was the first one turn it to do one, I think. I'm uncertain about that. But it, it went worldwide. Um, everybody started doing it. Leaping Lima Craftworks has said, Wayne is Welsh, right? No. No. <laughs> <laughs> and you, and, oh god and whatever you do don't call him a geordie <laughs> win win is originally from the northeast of england from uh, a market town called chesterley street which uh, in roman means camp on the street um, <laughs> um it's about eight miles south of newcastle nine mile west of sunderland and six mile north of durham uh, I now live in Dumfries in the southwest of Scotland, where I've been for the past, actually since I started to turn, 1986, uh, June and I moved here, and it was 19, 1986 that I started turning. Yeah, I left school. So, so Rex B says, ah, oh, so Wayne is Roman. <laughs> yeah, I was, I was around at that point. He was teaching the Egyptians how to wood turn. <laughs> so, a uh, general question for the chat, for those of you who have been following everybody, have you had a good day? Has it been enjoyable? Well, speaking for myself, I've had a blast. I was terrified this morning, but I thoroughly enjoyed my day so, so far. I've got to say, I missed some of the early stuff because my internet was... Um, was acting up. The old country wood girl said not too far from her. No, um, I, I, um, I am going to get down. Uh, country wood girl is in Cumbria. She, um, she's part of a, a family of uh, cabinet makers. Absolutely beautiful stuff. Go across and sub to her and have a look. Have a look at some of the stuff that she does. She does some really, really nice stuff. And when all this nonsense with COVID and everything has passed, I am going to have a trip down and uh, and visit. Gary Tuck says he's not far from you as well. Share him. Share it with share him. Geography's gone. Gerard the French turn is asking, if you were using chain, would you use the same system and as the quality of the twine wool has an effect on the results? Yes, the quality of the twine does have an effect. Don't use the um, the the garden type twine that's got all the, the hairy bits coming out the side. That doesn't tend to work very well. This is basically just a quite a thin um, knitting type cotton wool. That's that's what I use there. A thin jewelry chain, very very fine jewelry chain works brilliant. Uh, there are there's a there's a married couple over in holland now forgetting their um their youtube channel now but um he did a massive one it, i think it was about four foot long the um the chain pull that he did with a big piece of chain it really was a big piece of chain big big from you, twisted treats big from twisted treats says you can spot the bit of hadrian's wall wayne built because it has string pull and water drop effects on the stones <laughs> <laughs> right rex um i don't see any reason why you can't use crochet yarn <laughs> you do a beard pull rather than 
now, now there's one, Hodge. Now that's one I will think about. <laughs> Can you imagine you and Costas doing a speed turn off and then doing beard pulls <laughs> afterwards? <laughs> Right, um, Seth, the, the mix and ratio. I start off using um, what about 80 20, and I start off that's 80 percent paint, about 20 percent flow medium. Uh, and if I find that too thick, I thin it down. I, I find it easy doing that way because the flow medium is cheaper than the paints. The um, because he says he wants to order enough flow medium, the larger bottle of flow medium. It's only a couple of pounds more, isn't it? Yeah, you're better off going for the larger one. Yeah. Just get the larger one. Then go if off. You are, right. If you are going to order the Joe Sonyas, order the um, – it's like like a tester pack. and that's, the, the tubs all come in this sort of size, um, and you get all the colours in the tester packs. You get turquoise, blue, red, violet, green, and gold in the tester packs. Um, I don't remember if it comes with a flow medium along with it as well. It might do. I'm not too sure. Uh, but all of the test packs, these paints go a hell of a long way. They really do. You don't have to use really much at all. I think they've got two tester packs. I think one with a small medium and one with a large medium. But all the colours are the same. But I think the medium's a different size. Right. Okay. Uh, there's a question from Woodridge by Colin. When using in intrinsic dye, do you cut back after each coat, every coat? I want it as dark as possible, but still be able to see the grain. And do I use Yorkshire grit before? Right. Let's start with the Yorkshire grit one first. Yes, you can use Yorkshire grit. Um, but when you, when you use Yorkshire grit, what you have to do is that once the Yorkshire grit has done its job, um, the piece needs to be cleaned really well with methylated spirits or denatured alcohol because that takes off any excess that's on there. Um, then you can use the, the stains. Um, when I'm using the intrinsics, what I do, I, I'll, I'll, I'll usually do all what Martin does. It, would, it all depends on what the, the, the piece is, mind. But I'll put the, the black intrinsic on first, and then I'll sand that back. So some of the black is actually left in the green. It, it just tends to, to give a, a deeper, better color to the other colors that you use. The other colors, um, depending on how well they've taken, and uh, if the piece is working out how I want the workout, I'll not, I'll not knock it back. It just If, if I'm needing it, uh, a little different shade of something else in there, I might knock it back a little bit. Hang on, we've got um, young Terry coming in. Here he is. There he is. Uh, yeah, I'll knock, I'll knock it back um, a little bit. Uh, you don't really have to. I think that answered that one. It's a question from John Scarborough. Was there two colours in the flowers, Wayne? If so, how do you... Right, look, there's... Um, a, each, each flower is a different colour, but there's only one colour in there. The first flower was violet, and the second flower was green. The um, the feather had four colours. It was red, gold, violet, and green. That was the four colours I used in the feather. Right, Lawrence, um, I believe GP is in the chat, or he was in the chat. Uh, the, the people who organized this is GP Woodwork, that's Jamie Page, and Carl Jacobson. So Jamie tends to get everything organized from over this side of the pond, if you like. And um, Carl, uh, Carl Jacobson gets everything organized in the USA. Um, got to also have a big thank you to Dale from Maple Tree Studios, because he organizes the web page as well. There's the two colours in the flowers. How did you apply them? Um, 
I've chucked the string on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, what I did, I, I covered a length of cotton in the paint, then just laid it down on the piece, backwards and forwards, and then pulled it out. And it, it forms the, the flower effect or leaf effect. There's the link for the Virtually Crafty website, which gives information on all the makers involved today and links to their YouTube channels. Right, somebody asked a question there. Uh, dee, 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 dee. Uh, How you self -taught? Better beard pole? Oh, self-taught, right, self-taught. Um, I had, way back in the, the late 1980s, I had a, a two-day... A session with a man called Jamie Walwyn. Now, Jamie was the, the one of the partners in what used to be Craft Supplies when they were based in um, a place called Miller's Deal, just outside Buxton in Derbyshire. So I had a two-day two course with him. And then in the early 90s, I had a two-day course with uh, a guy called Morris Mullins, who uh, is sadly no longer with us. He came from, he was a Lancashire man, but he, he lived in Cumbria. Um, so I had a couple of days with him as well. And that's basically the, the, the amount of lessons I've had. Fork and Owls has asked you a question. I don't know if it's... Right, who, would, okay. who, who, who would do a better beard pull, Wayne or JP? Oh, probably JP, I would think. <laughs> Right, it's gone um, six. Let's get started again. One last question. Unfortunately, unfortunately, I've got to go. Okay, thanks for coming nice in, Steve. Steve. Thank you. Thank you. So, later, Steve. so um, goodbye to everyone in the chat, and I'll see you guys later. I hope you have a good rest of the demo. Is good. I'll see you later. Rex right. B's got right. a quick Bye, question for you, Wayne. See ya. Yep. Your, your main thumbnail that you use for your videos, yep. your picture shows a, shows a huge piece of work. What is it? And have you done anything large like that recently? Yeah, you know, the one in your, your right. thumbnail that you use that for your videos. That, that isn't actually that big. It's only about 12 inches diameter, that piece. It's a piece of burr elm, and it did get colored and textured. Uh, this is oh, I know, this is about 11, 11 and a half inches diameter, and it's about around about five inches deep. Uh, let's get on and get this done. Otherwise, I'll not get it finished. Good afternoon yeah, to everybody right. in the chat. Terry here. Uh, Wayne, just one small question. Do you know what happened to uh, craft supplies? So What happened to them? Yeah, they got taken yeah. over. All right. They got taken over by... Oh, I, can't remember, I can't remember if Turner's Retreat took them over. Right. Well, here we go for part two, people. So we've got 161 watching, Wayne. Excellent. Owl said, JP's beard probably would suck up all the paint. Like a wick. Apparently, um, Turner's Retreat took over craft supplies. Yeah. Okay. Cornish maid says she's still here, but you're in her kitchen now while she cooks tea. <laughs> Chisky Wood Creations. Hi, Chisky. Hi, Chisky. Hi, Chisky. Uh, Rex B's like to know what kind of wood is it, please, and where did you get it from, Wayne? It's Burr Elm, and I got this locally from well, what, around about 40 miles away from where I live. I've got a, a guy who does a lot of burrs, and I've got to get back up and see him and get some more. Um, but yeah, it's a nice piece of Burr Elm, this is. It's cutting nice. So I'm going to see if I can turn the speed up a bit so I can get through this. Ian Chaffer says, Wayne... Uh, Jamie Jamie Walwind was his tutor in Millerdale in the mid-80s. Great weekend. Still got his instruction sheets. 
We found the flames as my hobby. Craft supplies had a turning place in France. Oh, yes, they did. That's right. Yeah, you could go on holiday and spend, and spend the week turning. from Twisted Trees is asking Cornish Maid what are we all having for tea and is her table big enough for 162 of us? <laughs> pasties. Pasties. Cornish pasties. We'd be there with still all the rest of you. Tonight, she's got homemade burger and chips. That's what we then got. She, then, well, well, then, she, then she goes on about some, some rubbish which I can't understand or read. Pretty sure it's probably incorrect anyway, so I'm not going to bother. <laughs> <laughs> we got burgers tonight. All right, KFC. I haven't had anything yet. I've been too busy. <laughs> I'm not yeah. going to through my stick. Oh, See, Ian Chapo has his, nice. he lives, Ian Chapo lives in Lincolnshire and he says he has pa his pasties baked in Penzance and delivered 10 at a time. Good man. Paula, Paula's in, says hello, sorry she's late, Wayne. Hi, Paula. How are you doing, Hi, Paula. Hi, Paula. Your brother's doing a fantastic job. Mm. David Millar's in. Hi, David. Hello, David. Hi, David. For anyone just joined, this is a piece of burr elm, about 11 inches in diameter. How thick did you say it was, Wayne? Uh, around about five at the deepest point. Beautiful piece of timber. Paula says she's good, thank you, Wayne. Sorry? Paula says she's good, thank you. Good. Alan Roper's in. Hi, Alan. He says, newbie here. Hi, everyone. Welcome along. Welcome, Alan. Good evening. Hi, Alan. Feel free to ask any questions. 
like and subscribe if you like what you see. It would be nice to support Wayne's channel. Live Tarant says hello all. Live. Who is the young lady? Ava from Douglas Mung. It's your senior. You heard me before. Stop flattering me. <laughs> so many jokes, so little time. <laughs> oh. <laughs> hello, Mark. I can tell you, I live a long way away. I feel safe. <laughs> Not for long. Hi, Douglas. That's quite correct, Mo Valley. You can ask any questions you like, but don't mention CA as a finish or anything about jam and cream on his cons. Jam first, then cream. Oh, so wrong. Cornish. Cornish maid says she'll shut the tamer. Too late, Cornish. I'm already the wrong side of the tamer. Yeah, he already lives there. Yeah, and, and Glyn is saying Joe has a new car, Mark, and she's not afraid to drive it. That's so true. She could be with you in a couple of a few, three, a few hours. Colin's Wayne, asking. Go on. Sorry, go on, you do it. How you do it? Wayne Collins asking, uh, is that a half inch or three eighths bilgos you're using? Wait, hang on. That's the half inch. That's the rub, um, sorry, Simon Hope, double ended cryo ball gouge. That's the three eighths. That's the Robert Sorby, uh, titanium coated uh, three eighths ball gouge. Right, just get the bottom of this cleaned up and get the mortise in there. Question for you, Mark. Yeah, I just answered it. All right. Typical, I'll put bloody oh, there it is. Don't panic. Dennis Beamish is asking, Yeah, Wayne, do, do you have two different bevels on your bowl gouge? Um, on my half inch one, I do. I've got a fingernail grind on this end, and on the other end, I've got a swept back grind. What dude, what dude does, is asking, and it's a very serious question, actually. Yeah. Will growing a beard make him a better wood turner? Obviously. Absolutely. Yeah. Goes without question. That's uh, Wayne's safety beard. Yeah. Alan Rogers. Alan Roper is asking. 
What uh, what would would not be suitable to use tea light holders? Right. Well, I think that's tea light holders. All wood. This I'll not have any of these lying about. I bet I don't. Yes, I do. All wood is suitable for tea light holders, but what you need to buy is some of these. These are brass inserts for tea light holders. Get them from eBay. I think that's a legal requirement now, isn't it, if you're selling them? Here he says, but to become a world-class wood turner, you will need to cut yourself on a scroll saw first. Fact. <laughs> Dara Cullen. Dara Cullen, Wayne, is giving you a super chat. Oh, thank you. Twenty dollars. Much appreciated. Thank you very much. How are we doing on time, guys? Quarter of an hour in. Sixteen minutes past eight. It always makes me laugh when Wayne asks us how he's doing on time. Like it really yeah. matters. <laughs> it does, because this is going to take some time to hollow out. I thought you were trying to think about what else you could do next to make the time up. <laughs> I was going to push for three pieces, but then I thought I'd do this one instead. I can answer that one, Douglas. Yes, you do. Yeah. Right. He's asking, um, do you have to use those brass or the glass light holders, even if it comes in one of those little metal cups? Yeah, you do. Yes, you do. Because those the little metal cups get very hot. Yeah. The best way to, to do it is you don't use proper candles. Use electric lights. What am I looking for? Sand and sailor. Now you should really see the green pop once I put the sand and sailor on. It looks gorgeous. Does it just? Wow. I hope that's not a practice piece, Wayne. We will have to see. Oh, just throw the kitchen roll on the floor. That's the third thing going on the floor, did you? <laughs> At least it won't fall any further. Ian Chappell's giving you a super chat. You're a natural, Wayne. Thank you. Thank you, Ian. Much appreciated. It's okay. I haven't run away. I've just gone to pick the paper up. Oh. That's the hot air gun. That's the hot air gun on the floor as well. Uh, Paula says, "Wow, that's looking very nice." Yeah. Thank you, Paula. I wonder if you could that's... lay the lays down, Wayne, and then lay down with it. Then you won't have to worry about things falling on the floor. <laughs> For those of you that don't know, Paula is Wayne's sister. She's a good-looking one. Oh dear me. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, it's time for you to sing the ditty <coughs> song. That's not my does very good work as well. And I do pity can feel as soft as your face with light brown Yorkshire gritty. Tell us a professional. <laughs> right, same procedure as before. 
Make sure we turn the lid down, not up. Usually, uh, if I've got a piece of wood, like a piece of burr, and it's got a lot of voids in, I usually don't use yolks as this. But the burrs on this are fairly tight grain, so there's not a lot of voids. I'll see how much leftover grit there is at the end, and I may just have to give it a bit of a clean using the air gun with my compressor. Watch, watch. It did hear you. Watch, watch. He says, I retract my Sinatra statement the other day. I don't know what I was thinking. I hadn't warmed up, Robert. That's what it was. Just spur of the moment. Yeah. It's been said. There's a singer. Terry makes a bloody good dustman. Yeah. And my wife, my wife says, if I could sing, you'd be a good singer. But you can't. <laughs> I won't be any better if I sang it. Well, you could. We you could sing with the Yorkshire accent. Yeah. Oh. And that good day. Let's mm. Why is that the good day? That's on that. Why I? Says Wayne. Don't give up your day job, Terry. No. <laughs> My day job's retired, Wayne. That's I'm going to stay now. If I came from Wales, I might be able to sing, but fortunately, I don't. Right, so that's let's see. Any where's it, there's a, a few wee bits and bobs and paper and stuff here. What I'll do, I'll just use that um, stiff bristle brush just to get rid of some of these. I could use my hot air gun to to melt them. I'll just use this brush. There's not many, to tell you the truth. Grand. Just got that done. And again, I'm going to use microcrystalline wax on this. I was saying to Martin, uh, the other week, Martin Sabin Smith, uh, something that I found the other day. An original tin. Oh, that's the original tin. Has it got stuff original, in it? Yeah. Oh, yes, it's got stuff in it. An original tin of high gloss. It, high gloss. It doesn't even have a batch number on the bottom. Get handmade, on. handmade by Martin himself. Tommy. Word wizardry by Colin is saying he's been furloughed, so that uh, it'll feel like he's been being retired. He thinks. Yeah, it just means you have more jobs to do for the missus. That's all. Yeah, that's all that happens when you get retired. Trust me, I know about these things, and I used to be a nurse, so that's another reason to trust me. <laughs> Dara Coolan says that uh, he's got one of those in the tall can. All right. There we are. That's, oh, hang on. Just a bit of residue in there. Get rid of that. 35 minutes to go, Wayne. 35 to go. Okay. Let's see if I can get this inside done. Should be a walk in the park for you. Should be a walk in the park. It's about to have added. Out come the big guns.
tail stuck out the way. Yorkshire gets asking, Wayne. is that the same age as the birds that he's got, Wayne? Um, no, I think the birds that you've got are, are a lot older than this, to tell you the truth, Glenn. That guy that would turn good evening not home. Good evening, David. Good evening, David. <laughs> Hi, David. <laughs> right now, Colin, Wood Wizardry of Colin. Wayne's using the three eight small girls now. Can you look how much he's taken away. That's why it's such a versatile tool. The best one to get us an all round one. On next, uh, Adam wants to move on next, Mark. It's mixed media girl is next. Right, I'm getting, oh, I'm obviously turning a lot of air here, hmm. and I'm wanting to get a fairly straight cut down the inside. So I've swapped over to me half inch gouge with the long bevel on so i can get a use because what you want to have is the bottom of the bevel seeing how this is straight edged you want to have the bottom of the bevel bevel going straight down that's why i've changed over that sounds very hard thickness yeah i'm quite happy with that it'll be quite a chunky bowl this so i'm quite happy with where that is just now i'll start cleaning some more out william's having to go he says he's off he's having his tree back in a bit hi william, hi, william. mark put the link in for the next one if you uh, can't get back in time to see when you Next please asking, how fast does that tell your half inch compared to normal wood? Sorry? How fast does that dull your half inch compared to normal wood? About the same. It's not actually that hard. The the problem I'm having is at this outside edge here, I'm obviously turning a lot of air. Especially with this bit here, I'm only hitting this bit once every, you know, I'm not hitting wood continuously. Once it gets past there, there's nothing until that bit comes around again. Mm. See what you, what you mean. Tony Harvey says it's a shame the middle is not being called out. Right, now the reason, now I could have actually gotten another ball out of this, but there would have been a bit of a faff setting up the coring system. And the other reason that I'm not actually taking the middle out is because as I'm actually doing this, okay, I'm not going that thin, but leaving the middle in is giving these edges some stability. David, a.k.a. the guy that wood turns, is asking, 
He's looking to upgrade his lathe and was wondering whether an old school solid like a Union graduate or a new Axminster 508 would be the better choice. Right. I'd go for the 508. So would and I. The, the two reasons I'd go for the 508. The, uh, the Union graduate tends to be quite short because a lot of them were built for school. So you've got to put riser blocks in to get them up to a decent height. And the other thing is that the 508 has a much bigger capacity uh, and motor and everything like this. With the 508, David, and it is uh, it's a beast of a machine. Very versatile. Douglas Mungham has a question, Wayne. Um, yeah. Could you turn that thinner at a later date? No, right. Yeah. Yes, I probably could. Would I? Probably not, because I am taking the whole of the centre out. And like I said, the whole reason the centre gets left in is because of the stability. If I was to take the whole of the centre out on this and then want to come back and turn it thinner, I'm going to get a hell of a lot of vibration on these side walls. Mm. Right, let's turn that round, go back to the fingernail. Crawford is asking, do you still use any tool that you got from when you started turning? I showed that the other week on a live. I did. I haven't got it to hand just now, and I'm really wanting to get this finished. Fish but I down. have I have got a ball gouge, which is all, all it's about that long. In answer to your question, Rex, uh, we could use a coring system, but uh, it's a pressure time now. system and when was mentioning that it could have done a um, set up for another uh, bowl but it would have been a bit of a faff to set up the car and system tonight I know. The problem with that is the F508 to 3 horsepower and the 230 is only a 2 horsepower. So you get a more powerful lane for the same price. And the extension is actually where it's included with the 508, etc. Yeah. The red extension is included with the 508. Another 300 pounds for the uh, FP230. If I was going to get a, if I was going to get a Stratus, it would be the XL. That's mm. uh, a bit out of my price range. I haven't figured out how I'm going to afford the 508 yet, so you know. <laughs> Christie's Wood Creations Wayne is asking, do you ever use a bowl steady? No, nope. never. That answers that question, Christie. 
Colin, the um, 508 is the same lathe that Terry was using today. That was nice. I've only got one lathe. Mark, <laughs> uh, more pole dancing will get the lathe money faster. I was thinking that you could do some videos on pole dancing for some money. I was thinking people could pay me not to pole dance. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How are we doing on time, guys? 23 yeah, 20 minutes. minutes ago, yeah. Plenty of time. You took seven minutes to get to there, Wayne. Okay. 23 to go. Give you a time check. Two. Oh, it's Frederick Day would like a recommendation on where to get a wood turner smock. Oh, it's just going to help me head. Axman's to do them. Sorby's do them. Mm -hmm. uh, Turner's retreat. I can't, yeah, that's what I meant. The Axminster one is short sleeve, so if you want long sleeves, then you have to go further. I use the Axminster one. Okay. Oh, there's an independent, isn't there? That normally goes to the woodwork job. Yeah, I'm trying to remember the name of it. Love all, is it? That's it, I don't know where I got that from. Because I think Lovell's do... Lovell's. Um, Lovell's, yeah. That's, that's who I was thinking of. Lovell's do free embroidery as well. got on is uh, one that um, was originally and it, uh, that was from Lovell's so uh, he does the sand coloured smocks
let's try my traditional grind. I might not get this sanded and finished, but I should get it hollowed out. Shop Talk Workshops in. Hey, Mark. Hey, Mark. Hey, Mark. How's it going? Hell, that's another one on the floor. <laughs> Butterfingers. Butterfingers. My God. Right. I'm showing court, court the seven on my clock. Is that, is that yep. right? Yep. Hang on. 15, right. 14 minutes to go. Crackerjack is saying, I know this is going to be controversial, a concave rest would help greatly with the tool chatter, but a concave rest forces you into a shape that forces you into a shape you may not necessarily want. Yeah, I just don't like them. I can't get away with them. I've tried I them. don't like them either.
Um, um, shop dog, uh, if you, uh, for your information, is Burr Elm. Douglas is asking, can you undercut a bowl if it's only two inches thick? Mm, really? Could, but it wouldn't be much of an undercut, would it? No, not really. Mixed media girls in the chat. Hello, mixed. I've Good linked up. your channel a couple of times, everybody. Mixed, Hi, media, mixed, girl media, girl. Is the, mixed media girl is the next maker on. Not the way. The earwebs are myself, Mark McGenneman Wood Turner, Terry from TJ Turning, and Joe Senior. Glenn Senior is better off. Notice I said better off. <laughs> yeah. Does that get me out of trouble? No. Uh, right, that was 80. One twenty. Two forty. Gerard. Sorry, go on, Wayne. Go on. Gerard, the uh, undercut means you've got a small hole in the top of a bowl or something like that. Hollow form, and then you go in and undercut the rim and take it right back but of course if you're only two inch thick you won't have much room to move around to take the, the center out all right i'll quickly put some grit on this rex b is asking wayne uh, yeah. um has wayne and his sister brackets the better looking one ever turned a piece together no, uh, Paula has been up here uh, and used the lathe. Um, from what I remember, she wasn't that keen. Uh, Paula has tried just about every hobby craft out there <laughs> and is very good at every, every one she's tried, but she's actually stuck uh, for the moment with doing scroll saw work. And she is very, very good at the scroll saw work she's doing. Been producing some beautiful work. Mm, maybe we could see her on the next challenge. The next. Uh, the only thing is, there, Paula. She, hasn't got a, she hasn't got a YouTube channel. Uh, she puts oh. her stuff up on. She puts her stuff up on Facebook. There we go. Right, I'll finish that off again with microcrystalline wax. And what I'll do with the rim, um, I could do a barry and burn it, make it really, really black. But what I'm actually going to do is just use some lemon oil on the rim because obviously there's no way at all. I'm going to wax that and try and bust it up. 10 minutes Ten to minutes. go, Wayne. 161 in the chat. Excellent. Cheers, guys. Thanks for sticking with me. I'm sure it's everybody's pleasure and ours. You've been over 160 since you started, pretty much. Yeah. Right. Now I'll Don't get my... People. Don't forget, Let people, me... if you like what you see, uh, subscribe to Wayne's channel. So I'm using... Just... Oh, sorry, I forgot the show. Yorkshire grit. I was using the Yorkshire grit. 
There we go. Yep. And now I'm using lemon oil just on the rim on this. I think I can get this bloody brush out. Very dry this uh, burr is, so this oil is just soaking straight in. I give it a good patina though, when it's finished, when it dries. Yeah. Rex B says, thank you for an awesome demo, Wayne, and the techniques to change a lump into this fantastic bowl. Thank you, Rex. Much appreciated. There we oh, go. A piece of art, not just a bowl. It's a piece of art. That is, I don't know how. Yeah. Just wipe some of that excess oil from around the outside and the inside. Um, I'll take this off. I'll come back and have a sit down. We've got a few minutes. I've still got the question to do. Still got eight Andy minutes, H. Wayne. Plenty of time. Andy H. Returning says, well done, Wayne. Immaculate timing. Lovely piece. Right. Have, have you asked your question yet or not? Oh. No, he's going to have to, because Wayne, I just thought you're going to have to look at the chat. Yeah, you, that's I, why I, I'm I, that's I don't why know I'm, what the uh, question is. <laughs> you don't know what the question is, but you might know the answer. <laughs> okay. Right, let's bring, I'll bring the YouTube chat up first because that tends to be better. Please, Beardy McShaven's here. <laughs> right, there's, I'll, I'll show the ball off first. There you are, guys. Um, okay. Hang on, we'll do a quick measurement. It's finished off at 10 and a quarter by six. Oh, it was six. 10 and a quarter. Diameter, six inches deep at its deepest point. A nice piece of uh, burr elm. Wrong way, got it in the centre. That's it. Nice piece of burr elm. Finished off with Yorkshire grit and uh, microcrystalline wax. So that's it, Very guys. Nice. Very nice. Okay, the question. The question. Has everybody heard of JCB? Yeah. Okay, I know you can't all answer at once, but right. What does the C stand for in JCB? Don't say. Your time starts now, chat. First one Wayne sees comes up. The first one he sees comes up wins. And it's Wayne that's got to call this, not us. Hat. Yeah. Wins a Yorkshire grit baseball cap. Everybody's Googling now. Yeah, everybody's Googling. Nobody knew it off the top of the head. Yeah, look at that. JCB, what does the C stand for? Hmm. Oh, that was a good question to ask, wasn't it? <laughs> Chat, you've got five minutes or nobody wins it. Because Wayne will switch off. Shall I type something in? I haven't Googled it. <laughs> <laughs> I've known that for years. It came up in a pub, in a pub quiz once. Yeah. Are you getting the chat coming up, Wayne? Um, well, the last chat I've got coming up was Steve Scott. Yes, you and me too. No, I've got someone different. Oh, yeah, what but... the answer is. I don't know. Got, See, I don't know the answer, but there's loads of answers come through on my chat. Oh, right. Oh, I don't no. know read them out from what, what you start with then, Mark. Read them out from the start. No, I'm going to go back and have a look. Okay. I'm going back, going back, going back, going back. Always keep it close to his chest. Okay, I'm going back. Let's see. It's actually coming up on the StreamYard chat. The first answer was Andy H's for turning. 
Andy is returning. Um, no, it wasn't Andy. Fred Taylor is the first one I see with the right answer. Fred Taylor. Fred's the winner. And the Cyril. answer is Cyril. Cyril, right. Yeah, but he is the first right one on, to say Fred. Cyril. Right, Fred. If you want to get in touch with me, uh, either message me on Facebook on Win the Wood Turner. If you want to message me on Instagram on Win the Wood Turner 2. Um, send me your uh, name, address, and everything, and we'll get the, the hat sorted. Right, guys, it is three minutes to seven. I'll let you all go for a um, comfort break before, um, who is it, Mixed Media Girl starts, okay? Yeah. Thanks, everybody, for coming Hello. along. I'm pleased you enjoyed it. I've had a, a good time doing this, um, so I'll see you all soon. You Bye for now. Bye-bye, everybody. Bye, everybody. Bye, everyone.